<clears throat> Good international time everyone, I'm Alas Rook and welcome to another ripping tutorial. In this tutorial, you'll be learning how to actually rip the models from XCOM 2. I'm doing this tutorial since I actually I never actually found any videos uh, talking about ripping the models out. So I guess I'll be the first one. Or probably I'm the second, but I don't know. But before we actually we, uh, before we actually start, we'll be ripping the models from XCOM 2, the vanilla game. We're not going to enter um, into the DLC, the War of the Chosen, into Blender uh, models into Blender. So you gotta actually get some things first in order to actually do this. First, we need to actually open up Steam and download the XCOM 2 development tools. This program will actually allow us to get the XCOM 2 SDK file in your Steam apps library. This is how it actually is going to work. We're not going to be able to rip the models from the standard XCOM 2 file. But we'll actually get the models from the XCOM 2 SDK. So, first, you download XCOM 2 development tools. Then, you activate and install two of the, uh, these two files in order for this program to work. Or, I'm not sure because I did not try, but I, if you want to keep on modding XCOM 2, I highly suggest you activate these two files. And that will be the XCOM 2 SDK folder done. Moving on to the other tool, which is the ripping tool. Uh, Unreal Engine Viewer, or uh, known as... as or known as unmodel. And the reason why we are actually installing UE Viewer is because XCOM 2 is running on uh, on the Unreal Engine. I think it was free uh, 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 graphical engine. So to get this program, I'll leave the link in the description for uh, the um, uh, Unreal uh, Engine Viewer and we will download the Windows version because this is rolls on Windows and with that out of the way let's begin ripping the assets alright first we need to actually figure out what we want to rip from the game I've ripped actually head models from the game files and it, it, those are more, much more complicated since the characters heads are formed by the eyes, face mod, a head model, mouth and the hair and other accessories which are completely different models so I have to rip them apart. But for the sake of this tutorial we're going to rip one single asset which requires no accessories whatsoever. And so I thought to, uh, and I thought that the best thing to actually rip is actually a weapon from the game. And that will be the conventional sword, which you get from the first ranger, which is the melee weapon of the rangers at the beginning of the game. Uh, the uh, Tar 1, I think it's called. I'm new to uh, XCOM, but we'll see. So we need to actually figure out where exactly is that model. Well, this is where source X, uh, where the XCOM 2 SDK file uh, folder comes in handy. You're gonna open up the location of the file. Uh, my Steam library is on a hard drive uh, for unimportant games. I have a dedicated. Um, a uh, file just for the games so it might actually be in various uh, locations where uh, steam, uh, your steam library might be the steam apps common in the other games 
So you open up XCOM to SDK. You'll go to XCOM game. You'll go to content. And then to XCOM 2. And packages. I think this tutorial also works on the maps. But I did not try it out. But I tried it out on the other models. So if you want to actually somewhat import assets from the maps in order to create your artwork in Blender or other uh, 3D models for your own, uh, if for just your personal use only, not commercial one, feel free to do it. You go to packages and here are the assets. As you can see we have characters, dev tools, environment, game data and so on and so forth. But we'll go into weapons. And as we can see, we have multiple categories. We have alien, beam, conventional, heavy um, armor weapons, which are like the suit or uh, weapons, items, magnetic, and so on and so forth. And we'll go to conventional. Here's a thing that you should be able to see. Every weapon, every model has their own location. You just have to find it. Uh, I'll try, but if you have any uh, questions about where a model might be, I'll happily try to help you out in the comments. So make sure you leave those questions in the comments. I, I'm i really active in... Um, uh, I'm really... I'm actively going through game files uh, just to see where the model assets are for my own uh, artworks from Blender. So we found the sword, the conventional sword. We now actually open up Blender, uh, not Blender, uh, the Unreal Engine um, a viewer. Uh, and then we get this. We get, you know, the type of the things we want to export. Texture, skeleton mesh, more targets and animation and so on and so forth. And we need to select that path. So we get this path, hold on. We copy the address, you paste the address, if you want to do this my way. Um, and it, or you could simply go here and select the folder by yourself. Uh, you don't really need to override game detection, but if you want, or in case you want to rip another uh, the models from other Unreal Engine games, this is actually works on multiple uh, Unreal Engine games. You can select the engine and then select the game. Devil May Cry, Burlesque 2 and so on and so forth. So, in case for that game, I think this tutorial actually applies to multiple games at once. Let's come to. However, if you want to do that, check out the game compatibility. Some games may not work. Of course, you can also select the platforms, but we're on PC anyways. So we select the path. We press OK. Then we find the assets. We're going to select the sword. But before we do this, we're going to go to tools options. Because here's a really interesting... Uh, here's something that you must know before ripping. Before you lay out, uh, grip the model and uh, place it somewhere you might never actually find it anymore. So you need to select the ripping uh, folder you want to put it in. Uh, I have on the desktop ripped assets and usually the platform go with the with this uh, to format with PSK and PSK hex. Uh, Blender actually has uh, PSK uh, the PSK importation uh, plugin so if you want to work in PSK feel free to do it. But I prefer uh, the JTF because it's more universal. So I'm getting the setting mesh, I'm getting the skeleton mesh in the JTF uh, format. I prefer the DAGA format uh, because it's uh, of high resolution. But if you want to keep it in PNG and have it uh, and have the textures low resolution, leave it as uh, you can actually just do it. And then we press OK. And then we export it. Same settings. And then we have the model exported. There we go. We get the instances, the skeletal mesh, which will be the skeleton in which you will be able to 
uh, 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 rig the model in ways you can you could actually use them in animation. You have the model right here in setting mesh with the sieve and the other parts since the sword is actually composed of three parts. And then we have the textures. Now here's the really tricky part. Uh, in the in some scenarios, uh, let me show you now. Uh, especially in the hair. Um, let me see. Hair textures. Some of the hair textures will look like this. I uh, I never actually discovered uh, any of these uh, types of textures before of diffuse textures, and I think you, uh, and that's because. In this game, you are you are able to customize your hair, like any color you want. But for the sword, there's nothing you can actually. Uh, there shouldn't be actually any reason to do it. But keep in mind that some of the textures, uh, if uh, that set model can be customizable, be wary that it might have a different textures uh, texture for customizability in game. So you'll have to modify. It. Uh, in Photoshop and other pro uh, programs. Now let's go into Blender. Uh, I'm using Blender 2.8 uh, in this tutorial because uh, of time for rip, uh, model ripping. And I actually discovered that... Um, uh, I actually discovered that uh, Blender 2.8 seems like a the perfect version for Blender if you want to rip models from multiple games since some of the programs might not actually be compatible so you'll have to install multiple versions of Blender some programs, in ca some cases you might actually not use Blender you might, if you, uh, you're using Maya or uh, other uh, 3D software uh, feel free to do it uh, I think, uh, this, is, mm, this is just the main, uh, main way to get the models out and I'm showing you how to import them in Blender. As I said, we're going to import. I have the... Um, where is it? You go to the GITF import. And then we now select the model. We actually rip. So let me see. Desktop. Uh, UV will rip models. Ripped assets. There we go. Conventional sword. Static mesh. And now we select the sword. It's quite small, so let's actually make it larger. Bigger, there we go. And we have the sword. And now in shading, um, we already have some sort of uh, multiplication node linked to the base color. And now I have the select sword, and we just we just put it on the default color. There we go. Let me let me make the background transparent, and let me actually increase the lightning. All right. Now we add. A normal map and there we have it the actual model in the game uh, in blender pretty cool huh in this case of the sword you could also kind of like rip the uh, rip the actual um, uh, you can actually import also uh, the skeletal mesh if you want <laughs> but I don't really see the reason why uh, you want to do this because now for this uh, for this uh, weapon model it's pretty much no use to do it you could simply increase the bone size increase the sword some of the model some of the skeletal meshes also come with the model so keep that in mind but if you only want the model you can add uh, simply add single bone you can make it larger Can rotate it and then you can actually kind of select it 
and then you select the model you select sword and then you simply put uh, automatic weights and then voila you have a sword you can also modify that part this was a tutorial of actually importing the model uh, into blender thank you for watching and have a good one